There's a lot of things I learned about attaining different internships and about what it takes to actually achieve them. And now that I'm seeing a lot of my younger friends in undergrad just really struggle with finding internships right now, I really wanted to create this video to give some of my best tips to securing an internship in the near future. So hi, if you're new here, my name's Eli and I'm a soon to be marine biologist and Fulbright scholar. And on this channel, we talk about all things career development and environmental careers and all the strategies to prepare for those careers. And so my very first tip for landing an internship in college is to take advantage of volunteering and unpaid opportunities if you're able to. In my field, this is really, really important to start gaining some experience doing volunteer work. This is how I actually built the foundation of my resume by doing all these kinds of free experiences. So some examples of the things that I did that really kind of formed a foundation for my resume and my experience for later paid positions were, um, I first was able to do an unpaid internship off of an island um, near Honduras. It was working at the Whale Shark Oceanic Research Center and they're a nonprofit that does a lot of marine conservation work and they taught me how to do a lot of identification for invertebrates and different kinds of species there and they also taught me a lot of what it means to be a community um, outreach coordinator and someone that does outreach in the community for conservation work. And those skills have been so incredibly important in my later roles and they've made me so much more competitive for later roles. But another thing that um, still kind of falls into the same unpaid category but isn't as much of a time demand is just volunteering. So in my field with um, biology, there was all kinds of opportunity to volunteer and just do a few hours each week working with different professors at my university. So the very first volunteer opportunity that turned out to be a really huge um, resume boost for me was working with a really big shark researcher at my university who had a really long ongoing project that constantly needed volunteering or volunteers and that was their shark survey where they had students come out and help them tag sharks, help them bring sharks onto the boat, help them take samples and document the whole process. And that turned out to be some really important skills for data management and working in a really high stress environment. So these kinds of skills are really transferable to other fields and this is why I always highly recommend people get involved in research if you're able to during your undergrad because there's so many things that you learn doing research that apply to so many other things within STEM or within all kinds of other types of fields. So I was doing that pretty much all of my undergrad career and it was literally like one day every month or every other month whenever I could come out. And I still had it on my resume as these concrete skills that I was still gaining experience with that helped me get later positions. So as far as getting involved in research and figuring out how to volunteer with um, a lab or figuring out how to volunteer with anyone, just start talking to people. Don't be afraid to reach out to a grad student. Don't be afraid to reach out to a professor or don't be afraid to reach out to a business or organization because they're probably going to be really happy to have free help and find some kind of opportunity for you even if it's just like an hour a week or an hour every other week that's still very valid and very valuable experience that you can put on a resume that is going to help you get a similar job in the future. My second piece of advice for finding an internship in undergrad is this concept of who not how and I'm actually reading a book titled Who Not How right now and it's really, really interesting. I'm really, literally just started it like yesterday. But anyway, this book is about utilizing people around you and people that you seek out to help you accomplish your goals instead of actually just working towards it yourself. You can get so much more done so much faster when you have the right people to help you. and. That concept is something that I didn't realize that I was using so often in my undergrad that turned out to be so useful. So looking back on my college experience, there are some very specific people that gave me internships, gave me jobs, or I, I would not have had as many opportunities without them. Um, one of them was from my unpaid internship that I did in um, Honduras. 
the mentor there was one of my letters of recommendation on multiple um, further internships and scholarship applications. And she helped me get Fulbright. She wrote me one of the best letters of recommendation I've ever had, and she helped me get Fulbright. I would not have had the opportunity to get Fulbright without that who. Another person that was extremely critical in helping me move forward in my career and helping me find more internships and jobs and such was the professor that I ended up working with during my undergrad. And this is another reason why I'm highly recommending people get involved in research is because it leads to so many more things when you are connected with someone powerful at a university. So the professor that I was able to work with happened to be a professor that got a $13 million grant or had about $13 million that she was working with. So she had a lot of power to kind of just create jobs and had a lot of power at the lab that we were working at. So working with her for my um, research project when I really needed more funding for to support myself during the summer that I was doing my thesis, she was able to create a job for me just because she had the money for me and she was able to give me something to work on more. Uh, my research supervisor also made me aware of another conference that I was supposed to go to this past um, spring, although it was canceled because of COVID, but um, I would never have known about that conference without her, and I would not have been able to afford it either if she wasn't supporting me. And there are so many other things that she's helped me do. She's written, I think, like 10 or 11 different letters of recommendation for me. And she's also just showed me how to be a very effective researcher. She's coached me throughout this process of just volunteering and working with her so much that I'm getting a really good feeling for what it takes to actually be a researcher. So my third tip is that um, to surround yourself with motivated friends. So at the end of my college career, I ended up founding three clubs, which is crazy. And the I, I did not do this myself. There's no way I could have founded three clubs. But I mean, I am able to have this on my resume for future internship and job positions. And all of that because I had friends that helped me do it with me. And some other examples of what my really incredible friends helped me do um, throughout my college career was when I didn't get the job I wanted for, um, I really wanted to be a biology like lab TA. I thought I was perfect for the position. I did way more than any other applicant by going and shadowing a lab. I shadowed two labs. I went to their wet lab. I did everything and I had a really great letter of recommendation, but I ended up not getting the job and it just absolutely crushed me. And having so much confidence going into it and just having all of that just stripped away made me doubt myself completely and feel so unmotivated to pursue anything else. And so my friend was with me when I got that news or a day later or so, and she let me know that the job that she just went for, which was another biology tutoring position in a different department, was still hiring. And she told me to get back up on my feet and just try, just to might as well try. And so I, I did, I went to go interview for this other position and I got it pretty much instantly, which was amazing. And this is just one of my favorite stories of mine that I could have quit and I would have quit, but a friend got me back up on my feet and showed me a, a, a new opportunity. It just let me know how important my friends have been in my um, personal and professional journey. So my fourth tip for landing an internship is to try to find someone that can help you with these applications. At my college at Florida State, we had a specific department dedicated to um, fellowships and scholarships. And I had an advisor located in that building and he was literally my coach 
for scholarships and applications and how to write them. He taught me how to write an effective application. Literally the only reason I was able to get Fulbright and literally the only reason I was able to get another $3,000 in funding for my research, I could not have done it without him. There is so much to learn about writing a competitive application for scholarships, internships, and jobs and so there's a huge learning curve that comes along with writing a very competitive application so if you this is where this who not how concept comes into play again if you try to just do this all yourself you're obviously going to be on that steep end of the learning curve of how to write an effective application for a while and it's going to be really really hard you're going to have a lot of failures but if you hire or have a coach at your university, like an advisor, like someone at a career center of some sort, then it's going to make it so much faster for you to make it through that learning curve and figure out how to write a very effective application. And so if you don't have access to a career center or an advisor that can help you at your university, then there is also Fiverr, which unfortunately you would have to pay someone to help you, but there definitely is some affordable options. And if you're going for a internship that you really think you are very competitive for, or that you really, really want, it's going to be worth the investment of some money to actually write an application that stands a chance. It's unfortunate, but your GPA and your resume alone are not going to get you the job or the internship or scholarship. You have to show who you are, what makes you actually qualified for it, and what makes, what, how, how do they even know that you really want to do this? There's an art to kind of scripting all of those things and putting them together and a coach can help you so much. Okay, so my last piece of advice is also very important. It's that you're going to fail and you're probably going to fail many times and that is very much okay. And this is such a learning process and such an important part of college and job pursuit and growing up really. It's that you're going to work really hard for something and you're not gonna get it sometimes, that you're going to really think that you deserve it, you're going to really think that you earned it, but life is just going to say nope, and it's not gonna give it to you. I had this experience with the biology tutoring job, and that's when it gets so important to have people that are going to pick you up on your, back up on your feet and keep you moving forward because it's totally okay to fail and it's honestly really amazing to fail because you're going to realize where you can improve and where you can be better next time. So my camera did die, but I wanted to say thank you all for watching and best of luck in your pursuit of an internship in college. It definitely can be very intimidating and very challenging at times, but they're still out there and they still exist and you can still get one. So make sure you subscribe and like this video if you haven't already and I wish you the best. I'll see you next time.